Okay, we are recording. Hello, everyone. This is CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, February 27th, 2023. This is time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting on the hashtag CircuitPython-dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it co coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45-60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. You can check the pin messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. First part is community news. This will look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hi hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers, separate from what we're all up to. Third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up with what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week, since the last meeting, and what you've been up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, we're going to go to community news. Uh, and I think the biggest piece of community news is CircuitPython 8.0.3 was released. Uh, CircuitPython 8.0.3 is the latest bugs fix version of CircuitPython as a new stable release uh, and some changes that are notable are the correct error reporting in SSL socket uh, for the RP2040, increased number of LWIP timers for MDNS, and on the SAM boards fix pad assignments for busio.uart and improve pen validation. And then our CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub, and submit a pull request with the changes. You may also tag with CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. You can also hashtag on Mastodon as well. Uh, some notable projects I saw this week were uh, a clock that changes time when you look at it, and that's from Guy DuPont. Uh, basically, there's like this little sensor, and it can tell when you're looking at it, so that it shows random numbers instead of just you know the actual time. And another notable is uh, playing GIFs in CircuitPython, our own Mark Komu, a gambler, has been developing GIF image playback on CircuitPython displays, coming CircuitPython 8.1.0 beta. Uh, it's best on lower resolution displays and faster microcontroller due to the high data transfer requirements. And that wraps up the newsletter, which will be out tomorrow. Be sure that you're subscribed. Uh, and the next is going to be a state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is the quantitative overview of the entire project gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from what we're up to. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. So first up, in overall, there were 37 pull requests merged from 25 authors, uh, 8 reviewers, and 17 closed issues by 11 people, and 19 opened by 17 people. And now we're going to go to Scott for the core. All right, thank you, Liz. 
<clears throat> okay, for the core, we had 24 pull requests merged uh, from 17 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. I think Melind Movasha is a new name. Xorbit is uh, occasionally. Ftab, Atlantor, Luisan, Double Zero are all newer names to me. We had four reviewers. Um, so thank you to all of our reviewers. We have 27 open pull requests. We're getting close to that 25 limit that gets it on a single page. Um, so as always, please uh, take a look and uh, help us out if any of these draft PRs can be uh, pushed along the line. That would be great. Um, Issues-wise, we had t eight closed issues by six people and 12 opened by 11, 11 people. So we're up four for a total of 624 open issues. And this, is, this seems to be, I think we're in the... Now that 8.0 has been stable, we're, we are getting more testing on that. So I think uh, our in issue influx is a bit due to that. No problem. Should We should get past it and, uh, and all that. Speaking of categorizations or 8.0, we have three open issues in 8.0.x. These are things that we think we should do pretty quickly. Uh, we have 12 open issues for 8.1, and we have 62, 62 open issues for 8xx, which are kind of bugs that we'd like to do um, sooner rather than later, or, yeah, <laughs> that we'd like to do it all. Again, this prioritization only really applies to those who are Adafruit, those of us who are funded by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. We're happy to see other folks come along and do things, even if they don't um, necessarily match up with these milestones. Uh, we have three issues not assigned to milestones, so those need to be, uh, they need to be uh, taken, taken a look at and categorized as well, triaged. Um, and that's it for the core. Thank you, Scott. And mm -hmm. next we are going to go to libraries. Katni is out, but Jeff has kindly uh, offered to read for us. Hello. Um, so this is about the CircuitPython libraries. And numbers-wise, we had 10 pull requests merged across all of the libraries from seven authors. And I want to say a thanks to E.A. Graham Jr. and LNK to past who are names that I don't recognize, uh, as well as the five reviewers, thanks to all of you. There is, uh, in the notes document, a list of those merged pull requests, and that leaves us with 46 open pull requests, ranging in age from one day to 881 days. And that one that's 881 days, I'm sure, is aging like a fine wine. Issues-wise, we had nine closed by six people and five open by five people. So. This week we trended downwards, but that leaves us with 593 open issues. Uh, among those are 75 good first issues. If you're interested in this information and more, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all the open PRs, open issues, and a list of library infrastructure issues. If you're looking to contribute, this is a great place to start. The issues can be sorted by label, so you can search for good first issue if you're getting started, or bugger enhancement if you're looking for something a bit more complicated. We have a guide on contributing to Git and GitHub, and we're always available to get you started with that. So let us know if you need any assistance. All right, I've got some more numbers before I wrap up the library section. Uh, we get download stats from PyPI, and in the past week we had, I think this is weekly, yes, we had 134,494 PyPI downloads of over 306 libraries. And in the notes document is the list of top 10 uh, libraries that were downloaded. Uh, Bus device often tops the list, NeoPixel. Um, and then some of the others vary. So um, if you're interested in statistics, go check those out. Um, and as far as library updates in the last seven days, we had several updates, but no new libraries. And that's what I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And next, we are going to hear from Melissa on the state of Moika. Hold on, I lost my document here. Oh, here it is. Um, so, Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week, we had three pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. There are currently four open pull requests amongst the repositories, and there were zero closed issues by zero people and two open by two people, leaving a net of 92 open issues. There are, or there were 
19,779 Pi PA downloads in the last week, and 7,793 Pi wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 101 boards. That's it. Thank you, Melissa. And that is the state of Circuit Python, libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the Circuit Python community and beyond for doing awesome things. I will start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, but have Hug Reports in the notes document, I will read them off as I get you on the list. So first off, I want to say a group hug, and then a uh, just now I would like to give a hug report to Jeff for reading the libraries. Uh, and next, I'm going to go to C. Grover, who is text only. Uh, he has a hug report to Dan, H, team, and community for the latest release. And now we will go to Dan. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks to Scott for starting to work on IDAT MX issues because we have a new board coming out. And thanks to Jeff and Scott for uh, an issue review meeting over IDAT MX issues that we had last week. So we kind of assigned things to everybody and pushed some things forward and decided what was more important. Uh, thanks to Xorbit for finding a regression of what is printed when we do a soft restart. Um, we used to print soft reboot, and some tools depended on that. I didn't know that. And there was a bug also where that ended up not being printed. So through Xorbit and I together found a very simple solution to that. OK, that's it. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next, we're going to go to David Glau, who is text only, so we'll read. Uh, has a hug report for Scott for taking care of his PR for Display.io SSD 1306 and Jay Posada 202020 for testing it on hardware I don't have. Uh, Mark Glamblor for the Anime GIF library. And PT for chatting about my two product ideas with Lamour. One was hinted in Desk of Lady Ada. That's very exciting. Uh, and next we are going to DJ Devin. Hello. Uh, I have a hug for Naradoc and Dan H for trying to help me with a recent UM Feather S3 issue. Um, I'll talk about that later. Thanks you to Skur for helping me find an alternative part in DigiKey that I, I couldn't find. And to Stendhal and the help with 3D printing channel for very interesting discussions about 3D printers. I've been learning a lot about 3D printers in there. That's it. Thank you. Uh, next, we are going to go to Foamy Guy. Thanks, Liz. Uh, this week, hug reports um, for me. First one uh, for Tetric for working on the JavaScript emulation uh, with the Laukui Lauk project. Uh, and uh, not only getting that up and running with some of the CircuitPython stuff, but also thinking about ways that it can be used to enhance some of our automated checks. Uh, lots of interesting uh, stuff on the horizon in that area, I think. Um, hug report, thanks to Scott for working on the seven color uh, e ink support inside the core, as well as making a couple libraries. Um, thank you to uh, GitHub user Vladek, who has made a bunch of improvements in the mini MQTT library lately, uh, and then a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Uh, next, we are going to go to Jeff. Hello. Uh, I have a group hug and then a couple of individual ones. Uh, one for Melissa for the very cool web based ESP32 installer stuff. Um, it's just every time you take a step forward in getting the software onto the device, it's wonderful. And this is one of those things. Um, a hug to Jim and Scott for some outlandish flash savings idea discussions and making me explore some haunted corners of the C preprocessor. And finally, a hug to Dan for releasing that latest version, 803. That's what I got. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next, we're going to go to Jose David, who is text only, and they have a group hug. Uh, next, we're going to go to Maker Melissa. I want to give a hug to Tactric for all your updating, all, or for updating all sorts of libraries and a group of everyone else. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to have Mark's share. Uh, has a hug report for DJ Air Gilherm. I'm so sorry if I'm saying any of these names incorrectly. Uh, Michael Lecoq, Deshipu, and Dan H for troubleshooting documentation problems with on disk GIF. Um, Michael Lecoq for writing a small Python tool to prepare GIF images that will work with CircuitPython. 
uh, Larry Bank again for the Anime Gift Library and who reached out asking if we wanted to include anything upstream to help with integration to CircuitPython. And then next is Retired Wizard who is also text only. Uh, Dan H and Niradoc for all the times they gently get me back on course. A group hug to the entire CircuitPython community for being awesome. And Bill88T for the settable PyStack PR. I never really believed I would get away from custom CP builds for, for my app, but Bill888T made it happen. And then we will go to Scott. Okay, sorry. Um, hug reports for me. Uh, hug to Jeff and Dan for hopping onto the IMXRT train. Yeah, it's going to be helpful having you two testing as, and fixing as well. Um, a huge hug report to Jeff for the lead on code size reduction. This is kind of, uh, for the CMD 21s, it's, it's pretty tricky to fit anything new. And uh, I really value that Jeff gave me uh, something from his back pocket uh, to to free up some space on the Sandy 21s. Uh, so thanks, Jeff, for that. And then also a hug report to Tactric for running CircuitPython with the RP2040JS. I think this is really exciting, being able to run CircuitPython uh, in the CI as if it were on RP2040. I think we're going to get some really cool library tooling out of that. So thank you for, for working on that. Thank you, Scott. And that has been hug reports. Next up is status updates. Uh, status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I will start, and we'll go through the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If the discussion becomes too much for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. And with that, I will begin. Uh, and I've been working on a lot of product guides recently. Uh, and in between that, I've been doing a lot of CAD for an updating robot liar harp project. Uh, I finished printing the pieces over the weekend, so hopefully I can try and get a demo going soon. All I have to do now is, you know, put it together, uh, which is always the toughest part. Uh, and next we'll go to Seagrover, who is text only. A flurry of activity, assembling, testing, and coding two projects consisting of four new PCBs. One of the project involves completely refactoring some older CircuitPython code with a fresh approach. The second is a new board family and code design. In the process of refactoring the first project, I found that when setting the duty cycle of a PWM pin with a fixed frequency, a code execution delay equal to the period of the PWM frequency is introduced. The blocking delay was experienced when trying to rapidly change duty cycle, particularly for DC motor and servo projects that prefer PWM frequencies in the 25 hertz to 500 hertz range. The delay also complicated the use of async I.O. for motor control. The SAMD51's PWM timer hardware has a double buffer mode that might eliminate the delay, but the symptoms indicate that it may not be in use. An issue was submitted. A tangent, wondering if the PWM duty cycle set delay could noticeably impact the throughput of other uses, such as RGB LED arrays for non-NeoPixel devices. Uh, and this week, a solder paste extravaganza, which sounds very exciting. Uh, and next, we are going to go to Dan. Okay, so as people mentioned, I released Circuit Python 803 on Thursday. Uh, we already see an 804 coming up, probably, uh, that X orbit, that fix from X orbit, and there's probably at least one or two other things, uh, as we have three open issues on 803. Um, we also want to uh, release the first uh, beta for 8.1.0. Um, there's just some testing that needs to happen before that happens, but it should be very soon. Um, as I mentioned last week, I'm working on UF2 bootloader fix for the SAMB21 that has uh, brownout detection in it, uh, which a number of people have asked for. Um, one of the things that I'm testing for 810 is uh, the uh, implementation on the Metro M7 1011, the i.mx NXP chip. And I've rediscovered, or I discovered that even though this board seems to work properly uh, on a lot of uh, platforms on my kind of bog standard Intel Linux platforms, CircuitPy doesn't show up because it fails in the process uh, of setting up. It's some kind of read failure. So I'm working on uh, some folks with that, and Scott is going to test it 
he dug something out of the closet so he can test it as well. Uh, this is not a problem for most people. It does work on some Intel Linux platforms, and it works fine on Mac, on Windows, on the same computers. So this is really a Linux-specific thing. All right. Um, I wrote a guide about CircuitPython safe mode. Um, and that guide is being reviewed, so it probably will show up around Wednesday or, show, or so. And uh, I did get a PyPico debug probe, which I'm interested in seeing whether it works uh, like uh, kind of like kind of as effectively as a JLink or at all uh, for people who now are being priced out of the JLink market because the minimum JLink cost is now sixty dollars even for the educational model. Okay, that's it. And next is David Glau, who's text only, so I will read. Uh, no CP activity this week except consuming Adafruit YouTube video. And uh, time spent in upgrading, installing my hardware, and playing with stable diffusion AI text to image. And next we're going to hear from DJ Devin. Thank you. This week I finished the physical 3D print of my mail boombox, which took about 150 hours in total printing in clear PET G, which was a minor victory in itself. Uh, I attempted to start the uh, start the wiring up the I2S uh, audio module today, which is going to piggyback onto the Laura Featherwing, so it's a double stack. And I couldn't even boot that up uh, because Windows refuses to detect the UM Feather S3 as a USB storage device, which was something that just happened like hours ago. I just started on that. Uh, and it's stuck as a JTAG device, which I've never seen before. Um, and the, and a very last minute, I think I discovered a potential issue with the USB-C connector itself that uh, Unexpected Maker is using. Uh, it has some really weird issue where if you move it by a hair, one of the LEDs on the side will barely light, almost like it's a capacitance kind of issue where I, it, I don't know it was weird um so there's there's something going on there and it could be my cables i could have just all bad USB-C cables um but since i've never been able to get the thing to work right uh, i'm kind of starting to lean toward a bad USB-C connection or maybe some kind of crosstalk next to the usb that would make a lot of sense um, I've been in touch with Chep3D, who is a popular YouTuber for 3D printing about a possible 2.0 revision of his e-leveler PCB, incorporating some of my ideas from the Betabrader uh, PCB design, which that was originally based on his. So I said, hey, you take it and you run with it. That's fine. He was really interested in the, the additional gantry leveling um, switch idea that I added on there, as well as making it all one-sided flat PCB so you can use it on a heated bit. Just overall improvements. And I was like, take it, run with it, it's yours, have fun. And that's all I've been up to this week. Thank you, DJ Devin. Looks like there's some tips in chat from Dan about what could possibly be wrong. And I'll also say just anecdotally on Windows, sometimes with these um, USB drives, uh, I almost have to reboot sometimes just to get it to work, even if I've tried everything that would seem to make sense. So I'm sure you probably already tried rebooting, but just wanted to mention that too. Uh, next, we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right. Um, I was not as around, not around as much uh, last week, so I uh, didn't have a chance to attend last week's meeting. So I got a couple extra bullet points in here, but stuff I've been up to, uh, trying out the animated GIF support on a couple of different devices. Um, I was uh, kind of tacked onto the side of that. I was doing some experimenting with the color converter class to try to get a better understanding for myself of how it works and uh, specifically like how it's different than palette and just the similarities and differences between them, um, what different functionality they have, all of that sort of stuff. In the process of doing that uh, tinkering, I uncovered that uh, one of the changes that I made recently in the Argument validation uh, actually, I think, limited the number of colors a little bit too small, uh, smaller than I had intended to. So I actually uh, went back and raised that limit in the PR, um, which I was I was happy to uh, find this out by tinkering around with color converter, and I walked away with a better understanding of it as well. So I'm uh, feeling much better off on um, how that stuff works together. Um, I uh, tested out some instructions that were in a PR for using the NeoPixel library on a Raspberry Pi uh, without having to use sudo for executing the script. 
Um, so that's pretty uh, cool stuff. And that was working pretty well for me. Um, and it was nice to see uh, that somebody submitted that. Uh, somebody from the community submitted that as a update to the library. Um, the other uh, thing from the last couple of weeks, I was working on wiring up and testing the Pimeroni Impression uh, e-ink screen, which is one of these seven color e-inks. Um, I was wandering down the wrong path for a little while, but I eventually realized uh, one of the libraries that Scott made actually works um, out of the box for this device. So now I've got that up and running. Um, moving into to this week and the next couple of days, um, this morning I was uh, testing out some PRs for Airlift and Mini MQTT. Uh, I got a couple other lined up to look into this afternoon as well. Um, I want to make some more examples for those e-ink screens. There's basically a, a simple one that loads a bitmap uh, in those uh, repos, but I think it would be nice to have some colored blocks and some other more basic things that don't require uh, external images or anything like that as well in order to test it out. Um, and then the other thing I have in mind for this week is uh, to start looking into uh, updating examples and learn guide code for the new Display.io APIs. Uh, those are changed with 8.0. It's still backwards compatible for now, uh, but I think now that uh, 8.0 is released and live uh, as a stable release, I think it's time to go and um, start figuring out uh, how much of all of that code will uh, be able to be updated for the new API. Um, so that's what I've got in mind for this week. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. And next we'll hear from Jeff. All right, it was another light week as far as CircuitPython work goes, but I did fix a bug on Pico SSL sockets uh, where a funny large number around 4 billion was returned instead of raising an exception. I investigated a, the PWM IO frequency limitations on the uh, Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller uh, and improved documentation in response to a user reported issue. Um, there is a possibility that it could be made more frequency accurate by using a slightly different algorithm, uh, but it's a lot of effort for a pretty minor return. As it is a typical error is like you ask for 60 hertz and you get 59.95 hertz instead. Um, and to the original poster, although they weren't thrilled with the idea, I suggested that uh, they could directly use the PIO peripheral to generate a very frequency accurate and a low frequency pulse. Um, let's see. And then Dan, uh, I don't know if you mentioned this, but Dan was going to pick that up and make it an exception if you ask for a frequency 6 hertz or under on the RP2040 because the lowest value that it can give you is about 7.5 hertz. Uh, anyway, I've been working on and will continue to work on the floppy Featherwing product guide, so look for that soon on the Learn system. That board does work with CircuitPython or Arduino and... Um, it's fun if you're into that retro stuff. And also, uh, just this afternoon, I plan to check out the functionality of two prototype boards that Lamar sent me, both are CAN bus products. And I think they've both been teased a really long time ago um, on Ask an Engineer or the Sunday Night Show or something like that, because they've been in the works for a while and have you know been caught in that uh, product shortage wormhole. But they're about to emerge out the other side, and that's really exciting. Uh, and now we're going to look at Jose David's notes, who's text only. Uh, last week, updating some examples for the e-paper displays. Worked in the verbose output for bitmap label. Uh, worked to get ASCII art from a bitmap based on the work from Jepler for the OV camera. Need more work. CircuitPython Jason, working to build a font for knitting pattern symbols based on the work of Marnin and Jepler with the fork awesome font. As a knitter, that sounds great to me too. Uh, this week, uh, different personal projects. And now we'll be going to maker Melissa. Uh, hello, let's see. Um, this, I finished up the CircuitPython installer and it's now live. Um, there's still some cores issues that we're trying to work out, uh, but currently the bootloaders and bin installs are working fine. Um, but the UF2 installs are the ones that are failing. Um, so it's just a matter of just downloading and copying to the board, so not a big deal. Um, I wrote a, a merge bin library in JavaScript, like ESP tools merge bin function, and it's uh, producing what appears to be a correct file, but some more extensive testing is needed. And I 
updated the whippersnapper firmware uploader to be able to use that library. And I submitted um, a small CircuitPython code editor bug fix uh, for the USB workflow this morning. And so I'm just going to continue working on that. Thank you, Melissa. And finally, we will hear from Scott. Hello. Uh, first on my list is testing the IMX RT USB with the Intel USB controller. I have an AMD uh, box that I use here, so I, I need to. Dan tried it on the Intel and had some issues, so I am going to dust off this Intel NUC and give it a try with that. Um, that's first on my list because that's kind of a showstopper. Um, after that, uh, the Bengal JS2 and Seven Color EP. Paper PR was merged in. Thanks, Dan. Um, I have two libraries to finish. Um, and as I finish those, I also need to go through the, we have the creating and sharing circuit Python library guide I did ages ago. Um, and it says uh, there's some guide feedback there that I need to actually go through and update for. Um, so when I'm in library mode, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, besides that, I was working on getting the MicroPython perf bench going with circuit Python. This is a uh, what the MicroPython devs use to judge uh, impact of their code changes on how performant micro, the MicroPython VM is. So I wanted to get that going on CircuitPython in particular to understand the impact of changes with memory hierarchy decisions on the IMX RT. There's basically like all your code lives on Flash, but then the CPU has some cache in front of it. Um, and then you have RAM and, and different types of RAM on those chips. They're, they're a lot more complicated than a lot of the other micros we use. Uh, and so by having perfbench going, I can like try the IMX in different configurations and get a feel for uh, what the right trade-offs are. Um, I'm going to write this up in this guide, this implementer's guide that I've been working on. Um, so as a smoke test, figure out like is the performance about what I want um, out of the port that I'm working on. Um, a, a consequence of doing this is that uh, we usually have a size analysis script for a build that says, here's how full flash is, here, ha here's how full RAM is. Um, and the IMX, because it has different types of RAM, and, and flash is a bit more complicated. So I I'd also am looking to Reduce, redo the size analysis script so that we can see how big each different memory region is. So we'll be working on that as well. And that's my update. Great. Thank you, Scott. And that concludes the status updates. Next, we'll be going to In the Weeds. And I currently don't see any topics in In the Weeds. So while I read the description, uh, that will be folks' time to add them if you have them. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. Uh, with that, I will wait once, twice, and we will move on to the wrap-up. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, February 27th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe, and that comes out tomorrow. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nieces role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>